Okay, going to do a quick rehydration of some sliced turkey from, and this was from our batch number five, about four and a half years ago. Hopefully it's all good. All right, on this, I'm going to just put some on a plate. Usually I'd put it in a plastic bag or some other container, but I want to be able to show this. This would be good for a sandwich. There's quite a few pieces in there. Well, yeah, that's, that's going to be too much for all at once. So I've got some cold water and I'm just going to pour that on it and see what that looks like. And things like turkey and ham usually rehydrate very, very quickly. And they just kind of soak up what they need. So I'm not too worried about it having too much water. I'll just take them out and pat them dry. It should take a very short time for rehydrating things like this. Okay, I'm gonna check that. Thinnest piece, of course, would be rehydrated almost instantly. That still needs another minute, even on this thin one. Wow, that's good. I'm just rehydrating enough for a few sandwiches. And then I'll show how we made that bread. Okay, so it just needs a couple of minutes. Oh yeah, that's getting good. I'm gonna go ahead and flip that over. And hot water might be faster, but I wanted cold sandwiches, so I was just gonna use cold water. And if it takes a few more minutes, that's fine. I should try some with hot water and see how that does though. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> heat up a little bit of water and try that. Okay, got a bit of boiling water now. I'm going to try one of those. Well, wow, that's kind of too big for that plate on the oxygen absorber. Okay, well, that's a little too big for the plate. So I'm going to put that in a couple of pieces. Oh, so a little bit of boiling water. Well, that seems very fast that way. Oh, now it smells like roast turkey. Wow, yeah. So boiling water is definitely faster. So if you want a hot sandwich, you could definitely go with that. Well, yeah, that, that worked quite well. Mmm, wow, that's good. That's excellent that way. And it's rehydrated just in a few seconds. I'll compare it to one of these. Mmm. Okay, that looks like it's done too. Well, maybe that one's slightly thicker. Go ahead and try that one too. If I snack, if I test too much of it, I won't have anything for sandwiches. Okay, that very thickest piece in the end still was slightly dry. Wow, that's good. Okay, boiling water, definitely faster. Cold water, if you've got 10 minutes to wait, do that. If you want a cold sandwich, if you want a hot sandwich, just go right for the boiling water, because that worked great. That's a good turkey slice. So I'm not going to make a sandwich on camera, because you know how to make your own sandwich. But I will show how I made the bread. This is from this cookbook. Uh, the new artisan bread in five minutes a day. And doing the master recipe which is just a simple recipe you can use for lots of different kinds of breads and things. So that's what I'm making. So I already have 680 grams of water in there. I teared out the plastic container, put that in there. Then I need, uh, then I need 10 grams of yeast, which is about a tablespoon. I'll zero that out. We need about uh, 17 to 25 grams of, of the kosher salt, so somewhere in there. So I, I just shoot for about 20. 
And that way if it goes a little bit low, a little bit high, I'm still good. Okay, then tear that out. And then 910 grams of flour. And I don't worry about going a little bit over because it's easy to scoop it out because there's a big dry mound in there. So 910. And it did go a little over, so it scoops them out. And probably a gram or two one way or another wouldn't make a difference. Especially with this bread dough. It's very forgiving. Okay. Then just mix it up. No kneading or anything. Once it's all mixed up, everything's wet, then I'll let it rise until it's at least doubled its volume and then it'll start to collapse and then I can put it in the refrigerator and use it over the next week or week and a half, even two weeks. So just make sure it get uh, mixed enough so there's no dry spots anywhere. And that's about it. It should only take a very short time to mix it. So I'm trying to get into the corners and you can start using it immediately, but I definitely find the flavor is better after two or three days in the refrigerator. Okay, that's almost done. Okay, just checking for any dry spots. Make sure you got it all. Okay, I don't see anything, so that's, that's, that's it. And it will definitely be a stickier dough if you're used to making bread and kneading it and all that, this is definitely a stickier dough. But it makes a wonderful loaf. Now, just cover that. I'm not going to lock it down. I'm just going to cover it, let it set until it rises, and then it'll start to fall, and then it's ready for the refrigerator. Okay, this has had a good chance to rise. It's almost full. I think it needs to rise a little bit more though because it hasn't started to collapse. So I think I'll give it another hour before I put it in the refrigerator. But when we could pretend it's fallen, uh, I mean it's risen, it's started to fall, now it can go in the refrigerator and wait for using it. So I'm going to make a big loaf of bread in the giant pan that I got for the angel food cake. I'm going to use a whole batch of the dough. So this dough can be in the refrigerator for a week, week and a half, up to two weeks, I think. And it comes out great. It come, it's more like sourdough after a, a week or week and a half. But this has only been in the refrigerator for a few hours. So I'm gonna try to tip it out into this flour just so I can shape it into the loaf pan shape. So I don't really want to work it. It's not like regular bread where you have to knead it or anything. So I just want to get it into that pan and, and then uh, let it rise. But it's a very wet dough in comparison to a regular or a traditional um, bread dough. But since you don't have to work with it much, it works out just fine. So I'm just flouring the area so it doesn't stick to the counter. At least I hope it doesn't. Okay. I just want to work it just enough to get it into the shape of the pan. So I'm going to flour it with enough so I can move it. So that's a <laughs> that's a big bunch of dough to try to move. Snake. Okay. Ah, that's not too bad. Uh, adjust it just enough to get it kind of even in there. I'm not too worried about it. And I don't care if it's a nice smooth loaf looking thing on top. So then that can, that can rise for a few hours. Okay, well, that might not be a pretty looking loaf top, but I'm going to let that rise and see what happens with it. Oh, I should cover it with plastic, it says. Well, it rises. All right, so I'm just going to cover that with some plastic wrap and let it rise. 
So this has had a chance to rise for about an hour and a half and it's come all the way to the top. I'm going to sprinkle it with a little bit of flour and then slash it. So hopefully this uh, serrated bread knife will do the job. A razor blade would probably do better, but it'll help it rise. Okay, I'm going to try to dust it with a bit of flour. I don't know how that's going to work. So I can slash it better. A murderous slashing. Okay, I'm going to try to get an angle through here, or maybe I should just go down the middle. Ooh, I should have melted butter to pour in it. Maybe when it comes out. Okay, so I'm going to just try to go with one slash down the center and see if that will work. Well, it opened it up a little bit, but I don't want to collapse it, so I'm going to just do that. And put it in the oven and see if that works. So it's preheated to 450. I'm going to put it in there and add a cup of boiling water to the pan underneath to add steam. And it says that it should take about 45 minutes. Probably check it a little before that, of course. I'm done until it comes out. Okay, it's been 40, no, it's been 39 minutes. But I just looked at it and it looks nicely done. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out. Okay, that's out of there. Okay, so it baked for 39 minutes. It looks pretty good. It looks like it's going to come right out. Ha, that's a nice looking, you know, make good slices of bread for sandwiches or toast. That looks great. Now, I need to let it cool completely before we hack this baby up. Wow, that's toasty. That came out pretty decent looking considering it was just a jumbled mess in there when we put it in there. Okay, so got this big loaf of bread. I'm going to slice it in here. Wow, right. Look at that. That's a nice, nice texture inside. Good crumb. So, ah, that's delicious. So, slice it up with this guide, of course. You can slice it uh, thick slices or thin slices. So, it depends what you're going to do with it. If I'm going to do sandwiches, usually I'll do thin slices. The cutting guide has alternating colors, so white and gray, so that it's easy to keep it lined up. It's almost like an English muffin texture. All right, so it does a nice job. Makes a good bread, nice solid loaf. So just making a small loaf and I'm just going to pull the top in around and just push it into the bottom just making a nice smooth top I'm going to just put some cornmeal down And then I'm going to let that rise, set and rise for about 40 minutes. And then I'll flour and slash the top and then bake it. Just stretching the top around there and make it nice and smooth. Should only take a few seconds. And don't worry about it being kind of lumpy on the bottom. It bakes all together just fine. So just folding it underneath.
preheating the oven to 450 and I'll give these about 45 minutes and they'll be ready to bake. So I'm going to get the first couple of them in there. Uh, I've left them out. It could probably be a little bit warmer, but okay. I'm going to dust it with flour and then a razor blade knife would work well, but I'm going to And try to get some nice slices into there. That'll allow it to expand when it steams. And I'm going to get two of them in there first. And I'll let those bake. And I'll get to the other ones. Those are going into the oven. Onto the steel. Real quick, add water to the broiler pan underneath. Got a cup of boiling water, and that will help it steam in there. Probably take it off the parchment in about 30 minutes. So it's time to check those. Ah, look at that. Okay, I'm gonna take it off the parchment. Gonna give it just a few more minutes, nice and crusty, and then the other ones are going in. Oh, look at that. Oh. Okay, I'm going to add a cup of water. Ah, look at that. So I just wanted to show the texture of this. So I was going to cut a piece. So I can show the texture. It's a beautiful, delicious bread. Some little rolls out of the same dough as the bread, which is very similar to the pizza crust. Now those are going in the oven. Both sheets of that on there. And a cup of boiling water into the bottom for some steam. So I baked them at 450 for about 20 minutes. And, and okay. Hey, that's hot. So anyway, very hot. Those look nice, nice little rolls. So already broke one open. So real good texture inside, still quite hot. Should let them cool, but yeah, sometimes you gotta eat them while they're hot.